On behalf of all of us in, with the Calgary Flames, my name is Beasley saying so long. Enjoy your evening. Please drive safely on the way home. Uh, right now, Brandon Parker and Corey Sarch are standing by with tonight's Flame TV live post game show presented by Original 60. You can look for new limited edition 15 packs of Original 16 Canadian Pale Ale. Each pack includes a mix of collectible cans for the ultimate Flames fan to proudly display. Original 16, official beer sponsor of the Calgary Flames. All right, welcome inside Flames Post Game Live. It's brought to you by Original 16. Brendan Parker alongside Corey Sarich here tonight. It is a Boston Bruins victory, uh, but uh, wow, there is a lot to unpack in this hockey game. 4-3 the final comes by way of overtime and uh, late in the overtime session, but uh, an outstanding goaltending performance by the visitors and maybe a game that uh, they'll be wondering how they uh, came away with two points. But I guess that's kind of what this team does is win hockey games. Now 47 on the year, leads the National Hockey League. What did you make of everything that went down here tonight and uh, how the Flames somehow fall on the other side of it here. Well, on the bright side, the Calgary Flames did exactly what they wanted to do for the most part in that game. They came out and they utterly dominated. They had yeah. the Bruins on the ropes the whole, whole time. The Bruins looked exhausted the whole time. And you generate that many shots, that many chances. More often than not, you're coming away with more than one point. So it's, we can talk about it a little bit and, and kind of things that unravel a little bit for them at the end of the game. But there was a lot of great things that the Calgary Flames did tonight. Just again, closing out the game, couldn't quite get it done. Yeah, and we'll go over it uh, and go through it, obviously. But uh, I think the stat that uh, you have to kind of talk about right off the bat here is the fact that uh, the shots, the final tally, and I think we can look at it here, updated just moments ago, but they end up out shooting the Bruins 57-20. And uh, it's the most the Bruins have allowed this season. It's also the fewest shots they've had for, so you can tell just sort of how lopsided it was in terms of possession and time and scoring opportunities. It's just the finish that's uh, holding them back here. Yeah, and again, a couple of really great goals by the Flames in the third period, and that was due to their perseverance. And I, when you look back at that shot total, Brandon, yeah. I think... I think probably seven or eight of the Bruins shots came in the last few minutes of the third period because they only saw the Flames end a little bit in the first period and yeah. then a little bit towards the end of the game. But for the middle 45 minutes, it was uh, all down in the Bruins zone. Well, let's take a look at how we got here, uh, how we get to the 4-3 final, go through the highlights here tonight. And uh, despite the fact that the shots were never in favor of the Boston Bruins, uh, early on in this hockey game, it was the Calgary Flames heavily in favor of the possessions, but it was the Bruins who jumped out to a 2-0 lead, starting here by Dmitry Orlov coming in through the zone off the rush. Yeah, this was uh, first shot, first goal. It's been kind of the Achilles heel of the Calgary Flames this year, and uh, Vladar's body language wasn't good after this one. And, you know, the Flames, again, didn't give up much in this, in this period, but the Bruins still seem to find a way to crack the door open first. Orlov had himself a big night, as you'll see in this highlight pack, but uh, there he is again, and this one off uh, a set face-off play by the looks of things. What do you see here on how this puck finds its way in the back of the net? Well, again, if you've got a guy lining up that wide, it's obvious that they're trying to find him and going to be looking for him. So, yeah. Winger's got to make the adjustment there. He's got to get out. That's his responsibility, and even if there is a fake or someone lets the puck go, uh, you got to know who your man is and get in front of him. So Orlov has two in the first period, his fourth and fifth of the season. It was 2 nothing after one in the second period. Here's some life, and it comes courtesy Blake Coleman, his 100th career NHL goal. Grab the puck, Michael Backlund, and you got yourselves a one-goal hockey game. Yeah, and it just, kept, it just kept building in the Flames' favor from this point on. I know during the second period, we're tracking highlights, and all we did were write down Flames' highlights. Goal scoring chances, goal scoring chances, and Linus Allmark, he turned out to have a pretty large impact on that second period as well. Yeah, no question, because they leave it down by one, despite, uh, as you said, a myriad of scoring chances. But uh, here in the third, finally some of that persistence pays off. Dylan Dubé finishes off a beautiful pass from Tyler Tupin. Yeah, this was, uh, it was nice that Lindholm didn't get a piece of this one either, because it definitely wasn't for him, right on the tape of Dylan Dubé. And great release, great finish, and he's been a real bright spot for the Calgary Flames. 
Sure has. That's 17 on the season for Dubé, and uh, more importantly, a tie hockey game, 2-2 in the third period. But some of the momentum that they established in the early part of that third continues here, and it was just over a minute later they find the go-ahead goal. And that was Pelche's at first, but if you take a closer look, it actually goes off a of skate and in, so Huberto gets his 12th of the season, actually 13. And I can't say it enough, Brandon, the Boston Bruins were a tired hockey team tonight. They were sloppy, they were terrible in their own end. This goal is a direct result of the Flames' hard work and how sloppy the Bruins were. And again, I thought that this was the chance that the Flames are gonna capitalize here and put this thing away. And uh, it looked to be like they were in control, but uh, this is on the power play. The Bruins get one late and uh, take advantage of, uh, of a bit of a breakdown in a two-on-one opportunity. Orlov sets up Pavel Zaki. And if I have to be critical here, there's no chance that Nikita Zadorov can stand up there and play the body. I was told as a defenseman in my career, early in my career, save the body checks for five on five. You do not run around throwing checks on the penalty kill. It just puts you out of position, gives the other team opportunities, and Boston cashes in. So 3-3 three, three, and uh, off to overtime we go. We'll have a little highlight pack. We'll show you on the uh, number of chances in that overtime session. But this was with, uh, I believe, four seconds to play here. And Charlie McAvoy finishes off some tic-tac-toe pass. Yeah, a little, uh, it looks, it feels like there's nothing on the clock here. You know, guys are, they're, they're looking to make a desperation play. But again, just not enough attention to detail there. You, leave, you got two guys behind the goal line chasing one guy. Well, where are the other two guys? They're out in front and they man. they don't uh, they don't miss when they get opportunities like that the Boston Bruins. Yeah, I mean obviously we can look at it and we will and, and have uh, you know from a Calgary Flames perspective and obviously some disappointment there when you play as well as you do against the number one team in the league. But uh, this does kind of speak to a team that is first in the NHL, uh, closing in on 100 points now up to 99 points on the season. It's just just a team that's confident in no matter what type of situation or what the games look like. I suppose leading up to the final minutes, that they feel like they can get the job done no matter what the situation is. Yeah, it was really interesting tonight. Again, they weren't in the hockey game. They were tired, but they just, they didn't. You got to give Allmark credit. Yeah, He I, doesn't let fair. the game get out of hand because the Flames could have easily been up by quite a few goals. So he does his job. He was, they said he was the most rested Bruin and he yeah. comes and shows up to play. And you just... It gives itself, it gives his team a chance to get back in the game, find their, which I don't think they actually did. But here's the one for me, and we chatted about it, Brendan. Yep. The Boston Bruins get a call at the end of the at the end of the game when yes. yeah. uh, Backstrom reaches in, yep. and Backstrom, you know, he's a Backlund. savvy player. Or, sorry, Backlund. Yep. Um, he's a savvy player. He always knows what's going on, and he generally would not make that mistake. But when you're a good team, you get the calls. Get the call. Yeah. And. Now, what are we talking here, five minutes left at that point or seven minutes left? I and think, yeah. that was one of the plays that I'm sure Michael's going to want to have back. He'll probably be kicking himself for that. It, it led to a Boston Bruins advantage and ultimately, you know, game's tied and we go on from there. So, But it doesn't always get called, to your point, though, right? At no, point, it, it right? doesn't, but yeah. when, when you're one of the top teams in the league, you get the, call. you get the calls. Yeah. Uh, before we get to uh, head coach Daryl Sutter, you mentioned it, and uh, we'd be remiss to go any further if we didn't highlight some of Allmark's work here tonight. And <laughs> in the end, it's 57 shots, and uh, and all but three of them are stopped. And and it wasn't like you know a high volume type of night without the quality. This had the quality and the volume. So and the full marks and the three that beat him. Yeah, like those had to be great shots. Yeah, uh, he had a little bit of puck luck on one of Lucic's chance tonight off the post and stuck with him. But his positioning tonight was so sound. His rebound control was great. And just no wasted energy in there, right, Brennan? He's yeah. just no panic, makes the first save, hangs around for the rebounds, lets them hit him. And then he did make a few beauty reactionary saves, like the one on Backlund's breakaway. Yeah, the scrambles, uh, there, there was a couple of them, I suppose, off of, uh, you know, that one right there is a pretty nice kick out on the pad on the, on the rebound. But for the most part, you, you're exactly what you're talking about, just positionally, there's no panic. But this one was impressive. It just looked like, you know, the way he reads it and then kicks it out. Looked like practice. Looked like practice. That's what you said. Looked yeah. like practice. And here's, you know, some of the scramble work, and there's a little bit of it, but uh, obviously in full control throughout the night. And, Hard to believe that a guy with a 938 save percentage could actually improve on that number, and I think it might even go up a point tonight. But that's kind of the night it was. And you know what's interesting, too, is when you play with goalies that get hot and are at the top of their game, like I played with Mika Kiprasov here yeah. in Calgary, Nikolai Habibulin down in Tampa, and he had a 
like a career year for himself. When they're feeling it and they're on top of their game, they make saves look easy. They don't waste energy making making those saves, and they're hard to beat, really hard to beat. Does it change the game as a defenseman? I, I mean, you, you've been on the other side of it too, but when you've got a guy that's like locked in like that on a night where do you feel – Different as a defenseman, maybe a little bit more confident. Back well, here. your whole your whole team plays loose, right? The yeah. Boston Bruins are loose. They didn't panic tonight, and even though they were sorely outplayed, they just kind of stuck with it and stuck with it. And I think also the fact that the Boston Bruins often score that first goal, which we've talked about sure. a lot, this yeah, it gives you some room. You're all of a sudden you're in the driver's seat. Yeah. You loosen up, and again, it's been probably a little bit different for the Calgary Flames this year. Maybe you tighten up when you're always chasing, right? Yeah. Uh, all right, let's hear uh, some reaction here and get this uh, started in terms of post-game reaction and start with the head coach of the Calgary Flames, uh, Daryl Sutter, uh, at the podium now. Let's listen in on his thoughts tonight. On that one, uh, fought back. 3-2 uh, lead. Got to manage the puck, manage your emotion a little bit better, I think, when you got a lead. Daryl, how do you explain that this, this happened a lot this year where you – you dominate with shots, and, and you controlled this game, yet couldn't Well, get it tonight, I wouldn't say it. Tonight would be a bad goal and, and not scoring a big goal, right? I mean, their goal, they, their freshest player played a great game for them. Another night, Daryl, where your goaltenders give up a couple early. That's got to be a frustrating trend for your group to be down early in games. It was like frustrating. Yeah. yeah, but I thought our guys handled it pretty well. Did you like, I guess, how your group battled back? After That's what I down? said. I thought they did that pretty well, right? Against the team like that. And I guess on that tying goal in the third period, would you rather Zadorov have not taken the body instead? I would rather he not take the body. Not. You switched up to your deep pairings coming into tonight. How do you think they did? It's an ongoing. That's been, you know, it's, that's often asked question, right? Yeah. So I think. Uh, no, and and Tanny, when Anderson was out, played to, played together, and they played together before I was here. So, uh, try to try and get Rasmus going again. Quite honest. Is that deflating at all for the group? I mean, he has played so well for you know almost the entire game, and just didn't feel like he got the two points he probably deserved tonight. Yeah, but it's kind of you need a couple of those things to happen during the game, right? <laughs> Coleman had been sitting on 99 goals for a yeah, while there. Yeah, good for him. Yeah, good for him to score. I think there was a couple tonight, wasn't there? It was Kadri's 800, Blake's 100. Yeah. Yeah, how, how, do you, how do you explain how your goaltending was so good last year and this year it's been challenging? Yeah. Just didn't want him to get hot. I mean, it was a month ago you were the other way, right? You'd want him to carry the load. Okay, thank you. Yep, you bet. If you require players, Sean is waiting for you in the lobby. All right, uh, there, are some, uh, there is some reaction from head coach Daryl Sutter on, uh, well, <laughs> exactly what we've been talking about, some chances. But, uh, you know, every game has a couple of moments that uh, define the outcome. And uh, tonight he pointed to a couple of them. Obviously, uh, there was a couple of goals early on. Fought back, but uh, but in the end, it, uh, it's it's a moment in the third period that changes it, and and uh, you end up on the other side of it. Yeah, and it's funny to hear Daryl say that, you know, you let a couple in, and then you don't get a couple yeah, yeah. on your opportunities. Yeah. And yeah. again, it's been happening a lot around here, but I just I thought the Flames deserved a better fate. And again, it you look at the great teams and the way they get it done and the way that they finish games and it's attention to detail. And and as soon as you have just a little hiccup or a little mistake, yeah. uh, the game can get away from you. And again, especially when you're playing top teams in the league. Yeah, for sure. Um, but let's, we'll hear some reaction from inside the Flames locker room. But first, let's, I want to just quickly show some of those chances in the overtime because we talked about it. And, um, you know, you end up giving one up with, I think, four seconds left. But prior to that, I think they had six shots on net throughout the overtime. And as you said, a couple of two on ones that don't even lead to shots. So again, possession, the chances, but you know, here's a look at some of the, that work in overtime. And you just love to see one of these fall for them eventually. Well, and a lot of these opportunities in overtime came via some shoddy yeah, line changes so, yeah, by both, change. by both teams. Yeah, Pasternak breakaway there. And this is a great Markstrom save on yeah. Bergeron. Well done, keeps his team alive. 
comes across. We've seen that from Markstrom before. Uh, Almerich at the other end, he was starting to look like he was he was tiring a little bit. Made some made some key saves, but I think the biggest thing from this Brandon is there was three two on ones by the Calgary Flames. Not sure if we got to see any of those. Yeah. And I don't think they resulted in the best scoring opportunities. Maybe a shot, a couple shots up high that Allmark handled pretty easily. Pass that was intercepted. Right. Um, again, just more stuff for the Flames to kick themselves out at a little bit. Like they had so many chances to cash in tonight, and they did such an, a great job of being the aggressors and getting all of their offensive opportunities. But again, these, these guys are proud individuals, and when they don't cash in, especially the forwards, and they want to be scoring and they want to propel this team to where it needs to be, that, that, that will bother them a little bit. But they've got to be proud of their, proud of their effort tonight. Yeah, for sure. And it, maybe let's, we're going to hear from Jonathan Hubert in a moment. Let's take a look at his goal, though, and uh, just kind of the moment of it. But you can see kind of the celebration. Just a thought on, on a guy like Jacob Pelche, that youth, that rookie energy, and you can see you know, the excitement level, and he's pointing to Hubert, like, that's your goal. I didn't touch it. Uh, but you can tell that, that that line has something going right now, and they had, they had some chances throughout this game too. Yeah, it's nice. They've been developing some really good chemistry, and everyone's asked Hubert o to shoot the puck a little bit more, but you, you, make you have to remember how great a passer he yeah. is. And that doesn't get to Pelche, but Pelche is going to be tapping it in the empty yeah, net anyways, sure. yeah. and Hubert o gets rewarded with a goal. And I've liked his game as of late. It's had a little more grit to it. Uh, these guys have kind of found a little bit of chemistry and had a spark. Yeah. And he had a couple of beauty shots tonight that Allmark had to make a couple of really great saves on. So, yeah. you know, just his game rounding out a little bit, and hopefully that offense continues to click for yeah, him. Yeah, it comes with it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go uh, back inside the Flames locker room. Let's hear now from uh, the goal scorer there, that uh, the third of the game for the Calgary Flames, Jonathan Huberto. Uh, how many shots we got? We got we to find a way, you know, to win that game. and. You know, it's happened quite a while this year, I feel, and you know we gotta get, like I said this this morning, you know we gotta get the, the two points, and you know we obviously we didn't, so we gotta focus, we got a point at least, but these kind of game, I mean, we we dominated, so I think we we deserve better. How because you of wrap that. your head around that? I mean, this isn't the first time as you referenced that you guys have sort of helped out a team, you know, and played a team a lot of ways, and it just seems like it doesn't go your guys' way. Yeah, I think breakdown, maybe we're on our heels and. We panic. I don't know. I mean, you know, we give them a, a tap in for the third goal, so it just can't happen. And you know, I think overall, I mean, we, we deserve, like I said, I think we deserve better. We, we got to win that game, but you know, all Mark played well uh, tonight. And uh, yeah, I think focus on the Leafs, I guess. Is that a game where you just kind of tip your cap and say, a goalie got us? And sometimes that happens in a game, and sometimes that works in your favor. And tonight it didn't or do you look at it a little bit more critically and look at mistakes but as you mentioned domination yeah i feel like i mean <clears throat> why do we have like so many goalies come come here and you know play play well against us i mean i feel like it happened a lot of times so is it us that can't find the back of the net or it's the goalie that's too good so it's a question we got to ask yourself but um yeah i think you know even though we got to you know we got to win that game even when we get up 3-2, we got to you know, find a way to close this out and get the two points. Is it a demoralizing loss, or is it one where you can use to, you know, the next opponent? I mean, at this point, we just can't, like, you know, fall down and be like, mm -hmm. you know, kind of, we, we got to think ahead and get, get the points. It's still tight. You know, we're still in it. Like I said, I, I, uh, we still had two, one point, so that's, that's what we, you know, we got to focus on. And, Next game, if we play the same way, I think we're going to come up with the win. You had a stretch in, in OT where you were coming down the goalie and Ulmer didn't have his stick and you made the pass. Can you tell us what you saw on that play? Yeah, I didn't know he didn't have his stick, so I didn't look at the net, obviously. Um, yeah, usually I used to be able to make these plays and do a little saucer. It went right on the edge, right to his stick, so it's, it's a bad play. Obviously, people are going to say, I got to shoot that, but if I make a little saucer pass, he's going to have to open that. And, I see I could have sh shot, but you know, it didn't happen. It's kind of play, you know, that's not going my way this year. So. What do you see on your goal? Oh, I try to try to pass it to Pelts. I think it would have been you could have could have put it in, but I think it, I didn't see really hit a skate. But at this point, it doesn't really matter. Is there something in the third period that you can draw from the back? Like, is it positive that you can take a <laughs> tough defeat to here? Yeah, we stuck with it. Like, I mean. You know, I think we were playing well. We deserved to, to come back in this game. 
and which we did. And we just have to. We gotta, you know, I think it happened too many times this year. So that's the kind of stuff that we need to figure out. Okay, thanks, you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, uh, Jonathan Huberdeau, and uh, describing a couple of moments throughout the course of this game. And, uh, you know, obviously, as he said, people will be critical in certain moments about passing, but, uh, you know, that's what the guy does well. And, and as you've talked about, I mean, that one to Huber or that Huberdeau to Pelche, the one he ends up getting credit for is one that's probably uh, going to go in back of, right at the back of that, a courtesy Pelche if it doesn't hit the skate. But uh, that extra pass is what's made uh, him the player that he is today. Yeah, and you can't go away from that. Just because it hasn't completely worked for you this year, yeah, you gotta you gotta keep going to your strengths, and that's his strength. And he's making the right play in overtime too. I know we didn't get to see that highlight. He talked about it. Sure, he's yeah. on a clear cut two on one. If he makes the play, it's a great A chance. I can't remember who was with him on the play. If it was Mange or, or whomever, yeah. but again, the defensemen in this league have good sticks too. We saw Lit Hampus Lindholm tonight knock down pucks out of the air. I counted three or four times. And yeah, I don't think it was him intercepting, but. It often looks easier than it is, sure. and uh, that's why all these guys are in the NHL. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. They all have good sticks. Uh, we got somebody else available in the room. All right, let's go. Uh, let's go back inside the room. Uh, let's hear from Dylan Dubé now. Yeah, I can't uh, take away how hard everybody worked tonight to battle back, and uh, however many shots we had, we. Uh, played hard. It's uh, you know got to score a couple maybe in the first period, change the game. Um, but can't deny the you know how hard guys work tonight. Do you look at that as uh, sometimes you run into a goalie who does that? You guys have seen a lot of that this season. I know that, but you, know, you don't know how much you look at your own game and criticize it, or do you just tip your cap and say goalie guys? Yeah, I don't, I don't even think you look at that. I think that just uh, is the way we need to compete every night. And, um, their first place team in the league for a reason. They know how to win uh, those tight games, and we uh, you know, gave them a run for their money tonight. We worked hard, and um, that's just the compete we need from everybody. You see things, and I know there is no silver linings at this time of year. I get that, but the idea that you battle back out of a hole and you take a lead, and you kind of play with, as you say, the league's best. Not silver lining, but do you use that as you already look forward to Toronto and say, we don't change much? For sure. Yeah, I think... Uh, you know, we knew this. There's good teams coming in on this home stand. So, to uh, you know, start with that effort, and you know, I think uh, I'm gonna bring that identity into the back into the South Dome. And I, I thought we brought that effort tonight. I think uh, you know, I think that was the most important thing. So, something to build off is that effort. Is it a demoralizing loss or a motivating loss? That's uh, a little bit of both. Um, I think you you're gonna feel it for sure. But um, now we we know we can. Uh, you know, play good hockey teams and play them tight and play them hard. So it was, uh, you know, it goes both ways. Yeah, the any, expla any explanation for why this keeps happening? You don't play teams, you don't shoot them, and you just can't get the result. Oh, well, tonight's a different story. We, we battled back to get a point. So I think tonight's a different story. Um, as I said, just the effort is really good from our group tonight, from everybody. Can you take us through what you saw on the tying goal you guys allowed when you were kind of working down low? And can you just take us through your advantage point? Uh, Oh, I don't really remember it, to be honest. I just know it, the Toff and Lindy were both driving. Um, I think Lindy left it uh, for me, saw me on the wide side, and I was right in the slot to shoot it. But um, yeah, I, I don't really know, to be honest. Oh, yeah. I, I, sorry, I meant the, oh, the, time. the one you guys allowed. Sorry. Oh, there, I didn't, yeah, sorry, I didn't know what you're talking about. I guess I didn't even get the time, yeah, I don't know. So um, the yeah. yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, he steps out, makes a hard play, and you know, we got to try and keep that out. got to cover, um, get back. Um, you know, I was a guy back, too, so we got to keep that out of, out of the net. Okay, yeah. thanks, Thanks, nice, yes. Dude. Sorry, I didn't know. Original 16, a great way to celebrate things done well. Welcome back inside Flames Post Game Live, brought to you by Original 16, the uh, Boston Bruins escape. I feel like that would be an accurate <laughs> word to describe tonight. Uh, escape with a 4-3 
overtime victory here tonight over the Calgary Flames. And uh, it's been said over and over again, it uh, felt like one that uh, you don't know how the visitors came away with a victory here tonight. But uh, alas, they did. Uh, let's hear uh, one last postgame thought here from inside the Calgary Flames locker room. Nikita Zadorov now. That play where you go to lay the hit, uh, just the thought behind it and I guess the impact it had tonight. Well, uh, I mean, unfortunately, Manji got stuck there. You want a guy cut the middle, so I had to step up over there. When you look at this overall game, uh, I don't know as though there's a lot that this group would feel it has to change. Is it a matter of a goalie guy yet, or do you look at it as there were some things that need to be cleaned up? Because from the outside, it looks like that's a pretty dominant performance that you don't want to change. Well, we're going to score goals. We had enough. We created enough chance. We had 57 shots. Yeah. We had two breakaways, and every time we got to score goals. We had enough chances to finish the game. After a game like that, where would you say this team's confidence level is at? I mean, it uh, doesn't matter. Like at this point of the year, you know, like we, we're scrabbling for life. Uh, we're still fighting. We're going to fight until the end. So, I mean, it's a grown man league, you know? You can't be f feel sorry for yourself. You just got to go up there and play hockey and then compete, put all your effort in there. So I think it doesn't matter how where our confidence is. Nobody's going to feel sorry for us. Is it harder, though, like for us than the outside? Like, it's got to be getting harder and harder to shrug these games off, like the challenge of being in your position. Well, I mean, it's harder to probably work 8 to 5, 8 to 6, right? We're going up there. We, we love what we're doing. We're competing. We're playing. Uh, best sport in the world, uh, what we've been doing whole life, so I don't think it's that high. Is this one of the, is it demoralizing loss, Nikita, or is it maybe even motivating as you already look ahead to Toronto? Can you say, do more of this on Thursday? Well, I mean, we've been talking about the whole year, we got to figure out we have 13 overtime losses, you know, like, I mean, like, can be worst, you know, we got to, like, we got to score. I mean, like, what else would you want me to say? Like, obviously, we look at the Toronto, like, as the next game, we got to prepare, we're going to go up there and then give everything for our fans, for the city, to make a playoffs for each other in here. You know, I think we have a really close group of guys, and then uh, guys staying positive, definitely. But, I mean, it's just the, uh, right now it sucks to lose those games. So, I think, I mean, I'm like, we're, nobody here is happy about what's going on. Nobody's here is happy of losing and everything. So, I mean, that's it. It's a trend for you guys to outshoot your opponents these days and maybe not get the result. How do you sort of change the tide on that? Score more goals. That's how simple it is. We create enough chance to score goals. Okay, thanks. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, there's some thoughts from uh, Nikita Zadorov, the defenseman, uh, following that loss. And obviously, you can sense a little bit of that frustration. That's a, a buildup of a number of games stacking up. But uh, as he mentioned, Toronto's in town. Same as Dylan said, uh, Minnesota doesn't get any easier. And, you know, that's the type of game that's probably going to win you a few hockey games. It's just a matter of uh, bringing that back right here on Thursday night. Yeah, like, again, you don't generally have games where you outshoot opponents like that. And come away with only one point. So again, just got to have to dust this one off, focus yep. on the positives and get after it because like you said, the schedule, there's no time for nope. sitting around and dwelling on maybe lack of getting that extra point. Yep. But again, they can learn tonight. There's lots of teaching points at the end of that game in how to become that team that closes out those games. Yeah, for sure. Score more goals, as uh, Nikita Zadorov pointed out, too. They just uh, finish on a few of those chances. Uh, all right, let's just quickly, as we'll roll out here, we see Minnesota coming up on Saturday, first of uh, two games in a short span. But uh, the standings as of uh, end of night tonight, uh, here's what it looks like in the Western Conference. You see the Flames there add to their total, get up to 67 points. The bad news is Minnesota, I think Seattle, did Seattle win, I think, tonight? 72, yeah. Yeah, they definitely so did. So they leapfrog, uh, well, at least Edmonton, as far as points percentage is concerned, obviously, of the uh, game in handy, the Oilers. And uh, there you see the Flames now sitting uh, five points back at that final playoff spot, which is now occupied by the Winnipeg Jets. Uh, so the out-of-town scoreboard Kings win tonight, too, I think, or at least get a point there in Winnipeg. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Doesn't get any easier in terms of the stretch on the rest of the way. No, and it's, you know, as, as you're fighting for a wild card spot, if it's you and one other team, it's not as daunting a task, but as people yeah. creep up or other sure. other teams get in the mix or you see there, uh, you start to get the constant shuffle every yeah. day. It's different on the, you know what, that, that puts pressure on all these teams and yeah. 
I've just found from my experience, you get that many more teams competing, everyone amps their up their game, and it becomes just that much harder. Yeah, <laughs> to get in because everybody's on high alert right well, now. Well, and a lot of these three point games too, right? And then it's points for everybody. <laughs> everybody's getting points, points for everybody. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for us here tonight. Uh, it is a four three win for the Boston Bruins here, coming courtesy the overtime and. Uh, Coming courtesy, Charlie McAvoy with that tic-tac-toe passing goal. The uh, difference in this hockey game here tonight, 4-3, uh, as we celebrate Black History Month here at the Scotiabank Saddledome. As for us, we'll look ahead to the uh, remainder of this three-game homestand. Upcoming, as uh, mentioned, it is the Toronto Maple Leafs, one of the other top teams in the Eastern Conference, and another team that's made some uh, pretty big moves here over the last week and a half or so. And uh, after that, it'll be the Minnesota Wild to finish off the homestand on Saturday night. Thanks for watching Flames Post Game Live brought to you by Original 16. We'll see you right back here at the Dome on Thursday night.